All right, guys. Uh, welcome to part four of the lab assignment one walkthrough. Uh, in this part, we'll talk a little bit about controlling line weights for output, basically plotting, uh, and also um, you know how to plot. Uh, one of the things I want to start out mentioning actually is this these lines here. Um, Generally, and if you kind of look at the original uh, background image, it's a sort of dotted line, right? These aren't solid lines, these are dotted lines. So in this case, uh, probably what you would want to do is find a way to change these into dotted lines so they actually read correctly. Um, now, you can do that within the layer uh, properties themselves by changing the line type here. Um, if you open the sort of layer manager and you know come here to line type instead of continuous, you can change it to one of these dashed ones, right? Uh, that's one way of doing it, but that also means that you'll have to make a separate layer for it. Uh, the, if this is really just a one-off and you're just going to sort of change it once, uh, one of the things you can do um, if you're kind of trying to select these guys, and this is sort of quick and dirty way. I don't really suggest using it all the time, but there are situations where it will make sense. Uh, is to select them, right click, and then go to their properties panel. Now the property uh, panel basically will controls a lot of the things of the, of the basic properties of ba almost everything here. So you can actually change this color, you can change the line type, the line type scale, blah, blah. All these things can be controlled on a per object basis, which means it has nothing to do which, with what layer it is in. Uh, even if it's on a layer, it will basically maintain these object properties locally to themselves, right? Um, so these can be sort of seen as individuals or uh, outliers. And so here um, I can change the line type to, for example, dashed. Um, and you'll see that it gets sort of dashed, but these are really big dashes, right? And so the next thing I'll change is probably like the line type scale. Line type scale is uh, set to one at default, so I'll just try five, see what that looks like. Oh, so that looks like it's getting really big. So let's try 0 0.1. And okay, that looks more decently like it, right? And so that'll take on the sort of dashed uh, character that we're actually looking for here. Uh, but Make sure that you know. You know the the sort of downside of this is that if you're kind of changing the layer, um, these settings won't change with it, right? These are you know are tied to the specific object. So, you what what happens is that if you sort of want to change things globally or you want to man manage things globally, uh, you'll have to kind of come in and change this individually afterwards as well. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, okay, now. There's a couple sort of things that you um, I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, if you go back and I highly, highly suggest you listen to the model space uh, sort of uh, section on printing, uh, paper space, uh, viewports, and line type, uh, line weights here, right? These are, whoops. Actually started it. These are the issues that are uh, really kind of more relevant to what we're doing here uh, to kind of hear the real overall uh, comprehensive uh, explanation about things. Uh, in our case, I'm just going to go to the AutoCAD button on the upper uh, right and go to print. You can type print, uh, just click on the print. Uh, it depends. Like sometimes you have, you'll have this sort of smaller dialog box. If you have a smaller dialog box, just click on this uh, arrow here, so to get more options. Um, for the most part, yours probably won't be set up like this correctly yet. But I'm just sort of picking one of my printers that are on my uh, network. Uh, in the lab, there's a sort of laser black and white printer. That's probably the one that you'll be using to kind of try to test print these guys. All right. So here's a uh, here's my printer. I'm just sort of selecting it in the printer proper uh, properties. And uh, you want to select a lab, uh, a sort of paper size that works with the printer. So in my case, uh, letter size. Now, as described in the uh, other video on plotting, there's a 
many different ways of plotting. What I'm doing now right here is actually I'm plotting directly from model space. Um, and because of that, I actually will need, you know, kind of, uh, in this case, I basically specified a window. Uh, and this window, you can basically choose this window option. I use the window option the most, to be honest, and just you know, click on the window and say, well, these are the sort of extents of what I'm trying to show here. Uh, if you don't center the plot, sometimes it'll sort of, you know, be off in the distance. So usually you want to center the plot. And then fit to paper is usually on by default. Now what fit, fit, whoops, what fit to paper does, it will basically try to fill the paper with your window uh, that you specified. Uh, and But the sort of uh, side effect of that is that you might get this sort of weird uh, scale in terms of the units. So often what I'll do to kind of get things into the right ballpark because you'll see here one inch equals 105 units. Um, to get things into the general ballpark, what I'll do is I'll click on the fit to paper uh, sort of option and then unclick it. And so that's 1 to 105. So I'll sort of go through the scales and you can actually kind of see a preview there. So if I did a 164 scale, that means that sort of window that I specified will be tiny and will be in the center of the paper when I when I plot it. And um, if you click on preview, you can actually see, oh, that's a sort of a tiny thing, right? So exit back. Um, so you want to pick one that sort of uh, seems to be reason reasonable. One ace, I think, will actually be too big. And, you know, some things will kind of like be out of the screen. So in this case, you want probably 330 seconds, probably the one that fits the best, right? And so you'll see that, okay, then these sort of uh, ratios will basically update automatically, right? And so once you're here, uh, that means you've, you've kind of set the general, the scale for your drawing and you can apply to layout. And take a look at the preview to get a sense for the size. Now you'll notice right here that this is a color plot and it's actually plotting the colors of your layers and that's not really what we want. In general, um, unless it's a specialized drawing, a lot of the architectural drawings we do are actually black and white, well not black and white, but grayscale. So what we'll have to do is actually uh, set up plot styles uh, or associate the right layers with our plot styles, at least in this case. If you go back and actually listen to um, these sort of uh, videos on the plot styles, plotting and printing, you'll hear that basically there are two main systems within AutoCAD for controlling um, the plotting outputs and line weights. Um, the one you guys probably have um, by default, the sort of newer versions of you know AutoCAD use the STB uh, format. Um, the sort of style tables, uh, the older, sort of more older school files, sometimes if you open them, uh, and here instead of seeing the STBs, you'll see the CTBs. Um, and so, but in this case, we'll just stick with the STBs. And um, I suggest that you guys use the uh, AIA standard one for now. Um, so go here, find the option that says AIA standard.stb. And I'll ask you, uh, do you want to assign this plot style table to all layouts? Just say yes. Okay. Now, uh, before you actually kind of do anything else, what you want to do is actually get a sense for what's happening. So uh, click on the sort of options or edit uh, button to the right here. And uh, take a look. And these are just the same things, uh, table view, form view. I think form view is probably easier. But you'll see that basically the way this is organized is similar to the logic of how we organized uh, the section drawing. There are fine, thin, medium, wide, extra wide lines, right? And as you cycle through them, you'll see the color is always black. The normal one is uses the object color, right? So that's why it's sort of, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see the colors. Um, but these are all black. And the only difference really is here in the line weight. This is 0 0.18, 0 0.25, 0 0.35, 0 0.5, right? Uh, you can decide whether or not you want to change these. Uh, if you change, change these, you probably want to kind of save this sort of uh, style table as something else because it's not the AIA standard anymore. It's something you've uh, customized, right? Um, you can add styles here. Um, 
So that's completely up to you to kind of mess around with if you want. Now, this is just to kind of get a sense. Now, these are the solid black ones, right? These are all 0.7. Screening is at 100%. Now, if you look at some of these, uh, thin screen, medium screen, wide screen, that means that the width of the uh, line, at least in this case, will be 0.5, but the screening which mean, is 50, which means it'll be basically be 50% grayscale, right? So this is actually a way to kind of add a another layer of uh, depth into the drawings. So you can actually have a lot of different grayscales, uh, even if the widths of the lines are you know, similar. Okay, so this is, uh, these are some of the options. You can obviously uh, kind of optimize these more. If you change the screening to 25, then it'll get lighter. 75 if you want something that's sort of in the, in the middle. But you should just, so you can sort of just look through these and sort of decide, okay? Um, I didn't change anything here, um, so you can just sort of save and close. But for now, we know that, that we're gonna apply the AIA uh, standard SDB to uh, the drawing. Now you don't have to click uh, OK, just make sure you uh, click Apply to Layout. Uh, it's grayed out now because I already did it. And then um, I'll just cancel out, because now, because I sort of already determined what SDB file I want to work with, uh, I'll go into my Layer Manager here, Layer Properties Manager. And I mean here, the plot style uh, table here, uh, instead of using the normal, I'll start specifying some of those properties. Um, so in this case, for example, if I click on the normal there, then I get actually get to choose from some of those options that I had earlier. And so in this case, for the sort of big hill cut, I'll choose the extra wide, say OK. Uh, the sort of normal, uh, the second one, I'll use the wide. Third one, uh, medium. And then railings, I'll use the, uh, I guess, yeah, I think I'll use fine. Because I think these are might be actually a little too uh, heavy for a small letter size drawing. Uh, hatch, I'll use the fine as well. And uh, just sort of go down the line and apply these. Uh, the hatch, I actually might use the uh, a screened, so thin screened option, so it doesn't uh, come out as too solid. Okay, so once you're done with that, uh, do the print again, and you'll see that it's sort of saved your settings, so you don't actually have to redo that whole process again. Um, go to the preview, and the preview will show, actually show you what should be a little bit more accurate. Now, now keep in mind, it's not all; it will not be 100%, you know, you still have to print it out to see what you get, okay? That's very important because sometimes the settings between different printers make a huge difference, okay? So if you're looking at this and you're happy, then you can just basically right click here and plot, or you can exit back to the dialog box and click okay and that will send the plot. And so in this case, it will send it to my printer and you're done, all right? Now the only other thing um, I think basically in um, the assignment, we ask you to do some extras and blocks. I think for now we can either, we'll just ignore that. I will show some of those concepts in a separate video. Uh, but I think what you all guys want to do is to just get to this point. Um, the only thing you might want to add really into this is to add your name, uh, UFID number, uh, your section, and um, so to kind of give you a, an idea, and this, some of this is also covered in the printing model space, paper space sort of uh, video. But if I switch over to the, this, you'll see that, okay, so you have a section, uh, ARC 2180, which section you're in, your student name, your UFID, uh, your GTA. Uh, so if you're in the morning session, write me. Uh, if you're in other sessions, uh, write Alex or Dominic in fall uh, 2014, obviously in this case. And once you have the plot, you can turn it in, and you're done with this uh, assignment. All right? Sounds good?